on behalf of krishi and srm ist i welcome all the participants and dr manish for the webinar titled quantum computing simulation acceleration using nvidia gpus dr manish has completed has completed phd his doctorate from iit delhi and dr manish has 17 years of industry experience in solving complex scientific challenges using hpc ai and quantum computing dr manish has patented and published many research articles in peer reviewed journals during his phd dr manish has developed air pollution models for the dispersion of air pollutants in low wind conditions he has optimized applications on hpc architecture for the param siddhi ai system in this talk dr manish will discuss the acceleration of quantum computing simulators using current a100 and v100 previous gpus the performance advantage of the commonly used quantum algorithm short qft and sycamore will also be demonstrated i welcome you sir for the talk you can take over the session sir thank you for uh... thank you uh, you could see my screen right yeah it's visible sir great uh let me start with the video just a second I would like to start with the video. Check the audio is coming. Can you hear? Audio is there to you? Yeah, yeah. We are able to hear, sir. ये लो, खाना. अरे चाची इतना सारा खाना, पर आपके हाथ का अचार गायब. धूप निकलेगी तभी तो अचार तैयार होगा भगवान जाने इस मौसम का बार बार छत पे भागते रहो एक यही काम रह गया मेरा आपके घुटने कैसे हैं चाची अगर ऐसा मौसम रहा ना तो दिन ये भी खत्म हो जाएंगे मेरे पास एक इलाज है चाची ये देखो फोन पे हाँ धूप कब निकलेगी मतलब आम कब सुखाने सर्दी कब पड़ेगी मतलब घुटने कब बचाने ये सब आपके फोन पे ये सब तुम्हें कैसे पता है मेरी कंपनी है ना उसका ऐप है ये मौसम से हम सबको फर्क पड़ता है चाची पता हो मौसम कब बदलेगा तो हम कई चीजों की तैयारी कर सकते हैं आपके अचार की भी अरे वाह तू तो कमाल का वेदर मैन निकला वेदर इज अडन लेयर ऑफ इन साइड दैट कैन प्रोडिक्ट हाउ वी फील एंड डिसीजन वी मेक द फूड वी क्रेव एंड हाउ एंड वेयर वी सेटिस्फाई आर एपिटाइट We drink more fizzy drinks when it rains and eat more yogurt when it's windy. Indoor paint sales increase when there is above the average wind. Hand and body lotion sales increase when there is no cloud coverage. Auto gas sales spike when temperatures are colder than average. Arthritis and COPD can increase on specific days. You can get an advance warning and not miss medication. The weather company and IBM business acts as your personal weather advisor to help you plan your day. when to go for a run swim or play cricket organizations can now use weather events and emotional triggers to better serve customers impacting lives across india with 15 minute forecasts available every 500 meters across villages and districts in india hi everyone good evening uh thanks for giving me the platform to discuss with all of you uh objective here to show the video one of the objective is i can act this video is short on me uh that is one but wanted to show that uh, the acceleration computing is very key and important what we are showing here is the if someone in been us or west side there is a weather channel is very common which gives the weather advisory right um i was in ibm and in my previous assignment i was leading the ibm weather company um, in india right as a technical lead i was there so uh, what happens is in general any government they run the weather forecast models four times in a day and they have the spatial resolution is around 10 km whereas the weather company they run their weather model uh, they accelerated them using gpus they are using nvidia gpu and with that they can run it full globe not the country full globe at 500 meter resolution 
and their frequency of update the forecast is every 15 minutes as you heard in the video so um, the acceleration or nvidia G using nvidia gpu is enabling this critical thing like weather forecast and which is helping in our day to day activities right we are able to make uh, good decision or informed decisions when we know in advance what what is going to happen towards weather right so that is one of the thing to show that uh, uh, nvidia is there and the acceleration is key it is impacting all our uh, day to day activity and weather is one of the key right um so with that i would like to start now and before starting just to introduce myself i am a mathematics masters and uh, did phd from iit delhi there i solved the pollution dispersion of air pollutants and inverse problem forward and inverse both like uh, emitting from chimney how far they can go and from the pollutant location finding the source right both problem i have solved during phd um then mainly i worked for 10 years in ibm um there i had different roles um i worked in ibm research where i was in uk for 3 years then in india i was in development uh then leading the ibm power 9 system which has gpus uh as i mentioned in my last assignment at ibm i was the technical lead for ibm um, weather channel and right now i am working as a principal solution architect we have i am working in these key domains hpc ai ml ai for hpc and quantum computing this recently i picked up right so uh, with that uh, today i am going to discuss about quantum computing the idea today is i see all here are knowing the quantum computing a bit uh still um, first i will start with accelerated computing what is uh, accelerated computing i will go little bit basics on quantum computing uh, as i was told that i can i should cover from begin uh, start then i will talk about the simulators and their performance and where nvidia fit in we have two offerings ku quantum and coda so ku quantum is accelerate all the your uh, algorithms uh, simulators with the state vector simulation and tensor network and uh, coda is a, a framework which allows the hybrid programming uh, from classical computer to quantum computer how the programming can be done this is a uh, coda is a platform for this thing, right so let's start with the what is accelerated computing so in general if you see now everywhere across all the domain and uh, say since srm university is here in your all the department whatever you are running or any model any simulations those are available on gpus they are using the gpus and having the faster you know turn around time quick turn around time and have more informed decision with these acceleration we are able to go deeper into the physics to understand the phenomena more deeper and understand them more uh, easily or more uh, make more understanding out of that now there are so many department and few only i am showing few few use cases i am not going everything in detail uh, whether i already discussed where we are now uh, same with even if i say go for molecular dynamics um, the well known code is gromex lamps nmd uh, those are hpc applications those also accelerated so high that we are 20 times faster with one gpu node than many cpu node and those cpu node are more than 20 30 right um, and those all these things they are ready to available one can go simply download as a container form and use it or even many of these source codes uh, if you go in their web page there you will find the gpu enabled version and you can use it right same with the astrophysics um, there they uh they would like to see the historical pattern of the uh, galaxies or whatever data coming there are two kind of problem they would like to analyze historical patterns as well as live the data are more right significant data coming so they need to analyze those quickly so both way the gpus are helping and that is helping them operationally uh of course autonomous vehicle everything is on gpu there are many sensors 
and many data they need to have real time uh, uh, simulations on that so there also the gpus are being used uh, so um with that i am not going everything in detail uh, now how we started the uh, the gpu computing right so nvidia as a company started in 1993 we were known as a graphics company where these cards were used mainly for gaming and graphics um around 2005 uh, we came up with the cuda and where we started using the uh, the graphics card for computation the same graphics card is start using for number crunching and that's where we start seeing the benefit of uh, computing and acceleration in that before that what used to happen in from say 1990 or around that time every year the cpu frequency used to increase say by 1.5 times Mo majority of the application with the increasing of frequency of cpu they get the acceleration year by year automatically by 1.5 times right but around after 2000 or 2005 those ex, uh, cpu frequency increase is kind of stagnant like 1.1x per year or right now it's almost stagnant due to the energy requirement as well as uh, uh, this space issue right the chip size is reducing the same time the gpu came into picture and now year by year we are increasing the performance of these all the workloads all the application by minimum by 1.5x and this acceleration coming not only from hardware we even same hardware we optimize our software stack every year so we get the speed up for the given workload and that is across the domain and by 2025 time frame around we are expecting we will be 1000x better than cpu only workload right the right side picture shows how the gpu and cpu works so any application we take that is starts with the io and then there is a compute part and then later on assembling the results and um, um have them in a particular format to visualize or to write them in a file or whatever way where we are focusing is the uh, compute part which is heavy and number crunching that portion we offload on gpu and compute it on gpu then take back the data on cpu and that's where we get the acceleration on that right so on uh, now demand for accelerated computing is growing fast as we see that uh, our uh, um our expectation uh, like if i go for internet or browsing any web page we would like to have personalized things but our expectation is things should go faster uh, what we want to see should come faster and we would like to see faster uh, similarly while scanning our x ray imaging and all there also the ai is coming into picture we would like to have quick simulation and detailed simulation make sense out of it similarly there are large language models now their size is growing and again there we would like to have accelerated uh, results as well as meaningful results demand across the industry it is growing uh, for accelerated computing because everyone would like to have detail analysis particularly in the domain of ai as well as hpc and they would like to know uh, deep, go deeper into that and that's where the accelerated computing helping uh, to all the researchers or users if we see the research paper publication over the years if we start from 2013 it is significantly growing not only in um, um, ai mldl but there are papers on hpc also so across the domain things are growing fast and now uh, there the accelerated computing uses are increasing um as i mentioned there is a very small portion of the code which we offload on gpu which is compute intensive be it 5% be it 20% but that itself gives the significant speed up right um uh, there are three ways to accelerate the application one is we have the um, accelerated libraries they are already accelerated on gpu um and we need to use those library in our code like uh, fft is very commonly used library in any application we can use qfft there 
and we get the acceleration. Similarly, the other way is open ACC directives. They are easy to insert the directives and with few directives, we can accelerate a particular um, loop or what we call it as a kernel. And there we get the speed up. And third, but uh, last but not least is using the CUDA language um, that allows your Fortran or C code or any Python code where we can use our CUDA, where we defined how many threads to be used on GPU we have better control or more flexibility and we get the acceleration. But nowadays in majority of the cases, even more than 90% of the cases, you will find the, all the commonly used frameworks, DL frameworks or HPC applications, all are already accelerated and we are getting significant speed up from these applications. So no need to, uh, I mean, these accelerated applications readily available their domain specific frameworks, they are easy, available, readily available. One can go start using them and get good speed up. So in right side chart, if you see um, generation over generation, we have currently the A100 GPU that is going on. Before that, we had a Volta GPU and then Pascal. And the next is coming as Hopper, that is H100. If you see the speed of what we are showing, the speed of even if we keep the same hardware, even say A100 is there for 2020 and 21, the average speed up is growing. So we are improving our ecosystem. Software stack is improving. So someone is using, say, last year um, software stack or any SDK, they should try the newer version of that. They may get better performance, right? Um, just to show the adoption of accelerated computing, if we see the top 500 supercomputing list um, that is being published every six months, uh, generally part of supercomputing or IAC in uh, Europe, um, there we see out of top 10, top eight are using the GPUs. So the increase of uh, uses in supercomputing centers is growing fast. And this trend will continue. Similarly, for green computing side, where we save the energy, if we see top 10 entries, all are with accelerated machines or the GPU machine where we, they get better throughput with the um, optimal uses of energy. Right? With that, now I would like to start the quantum computing side. Um, I'm sure many of you are uh, knowing the um, about quantum computing, what would like to start with a little bit background about quantum computing, and then I will come on this um, simulator side. Um, let's start with the play. This is available on YouTube. I copied this from one of the TED talk. Um, so with that, we will try to understand what is quantum computing and how that is different from classical computing, right? So um, let's take a coin. We start with the head of that. Then we say that computer flip the coins. Then as a user, we flip the coin. And then again, computer flip the coin. And finally, what we get is if we get the head again, then computer wins. And then if we get the tail, then uh, as a user, we win, right? It's a simple game, flipping the coin. First computer, then we, then again computer, then whatever results, according to results, we decide who wins, right? So traditionally, if we play, um, ideally it's a 50-50% chance who will win. Um, here we are showing the 53 versus 47 because that is due to some software issues. But ideally both has equal probability to win and anyone can win, right? But let's see what happens with quantum computing and um, how things changes when we play the same game using quantum computing. So before that, um, the quantum computing has uh, based on the duality features, like uh, the particle can be, um, there could be a wave behavior or they can behave as a particle, right? So both there is a history on that. Um, it's a wave-like feature and particle features. And finally, what we realize is when we, um, uh, the particle behaves in both way. It's a, when we observed, it's like a particle. 
uh, or we say quanta. So quanta behaves in both ways. When we observe, it's like a particle. And when we do not observe, it behaves like a wave. That's the conclusion we have. And quantum computing, uh, quantum computer operates on these behavior. They control this behavior of these particles, uh, the duality behavior. So it has both the state. And based on that, the quantum computer uh, work on that. Right. I'm not going into the history. Um, so just uh, um, this is infometry. Um, but the, with the quantum computer, we could not say that it is same as classical computer. The hypothesis is different. It's a totally different phenomena. Um, but one thing what I'm seeing, whatever right now we are trying to solve in quantum computer that can be solved on quant classical computer, what we have, but it will take long time. It, it may not make, uh, what you say, feasible sense uh, or practical sense to run the same thing on classical computer. And that's where the quantum computer, everyone is looking forward for quantum computer to solve some of the kind of unsolved problem on classical computer. Those could be solved on quantum computer. Um, we will talk on those things detail uh, detail in upcoming slide. What kind of application can be solved on quantum? But before that, using these behavior duality behavior, if we play the same game again, almost every time computer will win, right? But how it happens? Um, so for that we understand the classical versus quantum, right? In classical, generally we have two state, either zero or one. So we represent them as a head or tail. So zero is head and tail is one, right? So those two state, either one of the state will be there in classical. But in quantum, there could be a state, it can have either head or tail or both the state it can have. And that we call it as a non-binary fluid identity. And that's what we call it as a qubit, which can hold both the state. Uh, um, zero or one or in between a state it can hold, right? That is the qubit. So what happens is when computer plays, it kept the duality state, zero or one, both, I mean, binary fluid state. Um, then we play, again, similar state remain. Then finally, when computer play, it knows what could be, what should be the results, like here had to win. So it applies those filter. Finally, in our real-time simulation, those filters are applied. And finally, we get the results what we want. And that's where always computer wins here. So the key difference is uh, in classical, we keep state either zero or one, but here we get um, in between a state. And finally, we derive the state which we are looking for. And that's where the quantum, that's how the quantum computer works or qubits, that's how it is helping. Right. Some key words, uh, key terminology. Okay, so this slide summarizing where the quantum computer efforts are going on and where uh, what kind of quantum computers are being developed. Um, I, I can try to capture a few categories there. So most common are superconductors type where uh, the it's a loop of wires encoded with the information and they talk essentially at the frequency of ray electricity. And uh, majority of the work going on right now in this category, uh, those kind of computers are there like IBM, Google, Intel, all are working in this category, right? Uh, the strength is there is a error rates which are less than 1%. And, but the weakness is as a qubit, it holds one state for very smaller time. And that, that, that once the state is changing, that changes the results. So that is the major weakness here. But still, this is the most popular and most commonly used. Uh, second one is, uh, 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 this is the second one is the ion traps, um, which is um, the, where the ions are floating in the vacuum and which are trapped and confined by the laser. Um, and it is has a long coherence time, means it can hold particular state for longer time, and it has all, all to all connectivity. But the weakness there is scalability. 
again all this what i'm i'm saying uh, talking about they are evolving right nothing is um, as a concrete right now the next is silicon photonics um, where they store the qubits as a single photon um and uh, it is something like silicon wave guide um strength is scalability and manufacturable uh, weakness is their error rates and there is non standard computational model with that there are other approaches which are going on um, like neutral atoms it is similar like ion traps uh, there is a quantum dots which is confine the electrons or uh some sort of silicon using electron um topo topological units uh, qubits there again work is in progress but if it develops we can have the keep the uh, info for longer time um uh, uh, means particular state for longer time uh similarly for diamond vacancies some sort of compute compound or, or nitrogen vacancies under within diamond lattice which has the advantage to be at room temperature so particularly this uh, diamond vacancy if it comes we can have the quantum computer at room temperature right now we need to have to have particular state we need to have a particular temperature right so there we, that's where the quantum computing side the work is in progress right now the quantum computers they are available with limited qubits uh where for practical use we need larger number of qubits what we are expecting um, minimum 1000 qubits and more than that if we have millions of qubits that will be useful for our day to day um, to have the advantage of quantum computing in our day to day work and life right but with that uh, since we are seeing the quantum computing is reality the efforts are going on um as before uh, started q krishi also working in these domain the major domain what we are seeing for scientific discovery is finance uh, quantum chemistry cryptography and uh, path optimization those will be the major domain uh, where we are right now we are say we are having few qubits in the system recently ibm announced with the 400 qubit system uh but again there are uh, they are not fault tolerant yet um uh, we are looking for more better system with more qubits and low error rates and that's where we will see the quantum advantage right uh, but that may take a decade um though now it's a fastly evolving domain day to day we are seeing new things are coming up but still we see we are a decade away from the actual computer which will be used in our day to day um uh, work or day to day requirement now with that what is happening is uh we start working uh, the development is not stopping in this area so we we work with the simulators quantum simulators quantum simulators are helping in many way they are validating the existing design of quantum computers the new architecture also they are helping there as well as application side the research work is going on so when can you simulate those algorithm as a um, using on classical computer and understand the behavior of those application and those will seamlessly will uh, work on quantum computer once it's available right and th that's where we would like to have acceleration of quantum simulator so that we can have quicker turnaround time um i will come back on that acceleration part but before that what we are seeing the near term um, applications what will be useful so um again um, i think q krishi is working in all these domains one is the chemistry um where um, uh, particularly it is working for um, ammonia site most commonly used uh, what is happened is am ammonia is uh, used as a fertilizers for farming and there it take nitrogen from air and uh, uh, content in ammonia uh, but that takes significant amount of energy from the atmosphere like say 2% or 3% and that's where to understand that better 
we would like to use quantum computing or the work is in progress to understand that more. Um, similarly for batteries, which is very in, being used for as a renewable energy part of that. So there also we would like to use quantum computing. Uh, the last but not least is protein folding. Uh, at which state the protein gets folded. Uh, again, this problem, uh, these problems, they are difficult to solve through classical computer. Um, hence, the quantum computer uh, will show the advantage here. Right? Uh, difficult, I mean, there are various scenario occurs and we need to simulate again and again using classical computer. It is possible using classical computer, but there are many repetitions and also kind of very difficult to solve it. Similarly, for finance or logistical side, path optimization or supply chain optimization, um, those are the key problem, which we will see that quantum computer. Which has the multiple state like qubits. But right now, work mainly we are going on taking these standard data and then use this QML. Uh, it's a unique feature because machine learning, what we do is we take single dimensional or two dimensional data and convert them into multi dimension and solve the problem. So, this multi dimensional feature automatically fit well with the quantum side. And that's where we are uh, researchers are using the QML to solve the problem. Um, for far long-term problems, we expect these two algorithms will play the key role, um, the Shore algorithm and Grower's algorithm. Shore algorithm is to find the prime factorizations of numbers, encryption, um, they, and this is becoming threat because if we easily find the factorization, one can easily um, um, the encryption, one can easily open that encryption. And that's where now research is going on significantly. Recently, even White House um, asked for a particular study and they sponsored the study project on this. The right side, what we are showing is the Grover's algorithm where typical search, unstructured search. If we do the linear search, it takes longer time. But with quantum, it's a quadratic speed up. And that's where we see that um, we will have the advantage using quantum computing in this domain, right? So uh, application based on these two algorithms will be, we are uh, assuming far term, we will see the advantage of these. Near term, as I talk about those key domains where the work is in progress, right? Now, where NVIDIA fits into this picture or where we are with this. So, um, NVIDIA is offering two things. One is acceleration of simulators. What is right now, the, whatever commonly used simulators, those are being accelerated on NVIDIA GPUs. And we are seeing significant speed up. I will share some results based on that. The right side is CODA. We came up with the platform for hybrid quantum classical computing. What we are expecting, um, any application which will work on quantum computer, they, they, um, they will offload particular part of the application to the quantum computer. Rest of them will remain on classical computer. And that's where one needs a platform to offload the work on quantum computer and take the results back. That's where Coda is helping. It enables with all, all languages. And now researchers are using that Coda as well. Let's talk about co-quantum first, uh, which is a, so if you see the right side picture, um, we start with quantum computing applications that calls quantum computing frameworks. Most commonly used are CERC and QuitSit. Um, then those call right now, if we have quantum computers directly, they will run uh, on quantum QPU. But if we do not have those, then it, calls for a quantum circuit simulation like QSIM and QuitSIT, um, those kind of simulators. What NVIDIA does is they accelerated those simulators. And we have two, two libraries for that, a state vector and tensor net, QState vector and QTensor net. 
which in turn use the GPUs, available GPUs, and those accelerate those uh, circuit simulations significantly. Right. Um, with that, would like to say NVIDIA is not developing any quantum computer. We do not have any quantum computer. Uh, what we have is accelerations of the existing frameworks, like any simulations you do using CERC, Quitset, or Penilane, all are accelerated using NVIDIA GPUs. Right. Mostly two leading approaches, state vector simulations and tensor network. State vector simulations, it maintain all the qubits state in the memory. So it is a deep, quite deep, and that's where it needs significant memory. Uh, so, and with that, we are able to go up to 50 qubit using state vector simulations, right? And the advantage is we can model either ideal or noisy qubits. We can introduce the noise in these simulators and we can uh, compute those, right? Whereas the tensor network, it maintains the state only what we need. Accordingly, we require less memory and we can go more qubits. We already simulated up to 1000 qubits using the tensor networks. And for both of these approaches, the GPUs are a great fit and we are showing significant acceleration with that. Just uh, an illustration, and these are old results. Um, where, but what we are seeing is we have QQuantum as a container, one no need to compile anything, and that supports now CERC and Quitset also now. So one can uh, have the container on their your GPU machine easily and can run these simulators, and then one can experience these speed up. Here I am showing three speed up. Um, those are one year back. Now for sure algorithm, QFT and su supremacy, right? Supremacy. And there we see the speed up is around 70X to 90X, somewhere like that using eight GP. Now the same thing is further speed up, uh, further increase. And these I run recently on CDAC machine, Param Siddhi. Um, and here I'm showing uh, the comparison between earlier GPU V100 as well as A100, the current generation, and using two, four. So these are highly scalable algorithms, QQuantum. And this is, these results are published in the paper uh, in the conferences, um, uh, two conferences, right? So what we see is around for sure algorithm, we get around 142x speed up in comparison to CPU only algorithm, right? Similarly for QFT, 115X, and similarly for Sikimore is 104. So almost more than 100X speed up. Here we taken care while running the CPU only, um, what do you say, CPU only simulator, we define the affinity and other things, right? That's where this is speed up. If generally what users, they run the CPU also without affinity, without any optimization, then this speed up will be around more than 200X. That is the advantage of using the acceleration of these simulators. Right. Recently, we have this co-quantum on multi-node. Right now, I shown the results for single node. We can go on to the multi-node. Um, here, we are showing the results for weak scaling as well as a strong scaling. In weak scaling, as we increase the number of GPUs, we keep the workload same uh, for each GPU. And that's where we are seeing almost linear speed up. Similarly, right side, we keep the workload constant, but we increase the number of GPUs and execution time coming down significantly. So now we have co-quantum multi-node version. One can use those as per their requirement. Um, the bottom right side, we are showing that even 64 node CPU cluster can be replaced by two DGX A100 system. That's where we have a speed up. And now we are supporting both the frameworks and so on, right? Similarly, one can use the tensor net. Um, the, the tensor net is optimized. If you see the right side, um, the unoptimized one has a, a cost around n raised to power cube, whereas we have optimal contraction, which 
has the cost around simple six n plus two. So order of n versus order of n cube. That's the difference what we have with the co tensor net. And with that, we are able to get the significant speed up. We solve this max cut problem. And uh, there we see the significant speed up. These papers are published. One can go and look into those papers, right? We run this max cut problem or vertex count problem on our saline system. We solve 10,000 vertex problem for 5,000 qubits. So we find around 93% accuracy and uh, we see the significant speed up with that. So, um, right. So in summary, if we say that for Q quantum, if we go for it, uh, so we can solve the state vector and tensor network. State vectors in general deep, their circuit depth is more, and that's where we can solve up to 50 qubits, and all are accelerated on GPUs. Um, but for tensor network, they are not that deep, and that's where we could solve the larger number of qubits. Here we are showing the results for 32,000 qubits, and you will see that uh, we are gaining significant performance gain using GPUs. Last but uh, uh, about Q quantum, uh, almost last slide is we have these are readily available uh, solution. It is available in the form of container. Uh, one can start using it immediately and we can scale those on NVIDIA DJX SuperPod and one can get significant speed up, right? And one can simulate uh, thousands, hundred to thousands qubits for many practical applications using NVIDIA GPUs. Uh, where it is being used, few of the examples. If we see um, first is, ABCI, there they solve the 41 qubits state vector simulation on 512 GPUs. They won the grand challenge. Same with Xanadu, uh, they use uh, uh, novel cut techniques, which enable them to solve the 129, 129 qubits problem. Similarly, Johnson & Johnson, they solve the VQE problem and variational quantum quantum eigensolver, and there they found the 100x speed up. Um, if we see that others players, they are also using quantum, be it Amazon bracket, where if someone is using the Amazon bracket, there also you can get GPU, and there you can get significant speed up, faster time to solution, and cost is also lower. Uh, these are our, with the ecosystem we are working, so we are working with almost all the key players. We are partnering with them. And day-to-day uh, -day we are seeing more and more application using QQuantum, advantage of using QQuantum in their real-time applications, right? How I am doing with time? Okay. So maybe I will take a few more minutes to introduce the CODA and then we will take questions. So CODA is, as I said, this is a platform which allows the offloading from classical to quantum computer. Right now, we do not have any performance software stack. There are software stack, but they are still in development mode, um, not accessible to domain scientists. And there's always the bottleneck when we write any algorithm how they will offload from classical to quantum and back and forth, right? So NVIDIA came up with the CODA, um, which allows the hybrid computing. What we are expecting, as I discussed before, uh, pre-processing will remain on classical. Co-processing main algorithms, variational or QML, they will go on quantum. Post-processing like error correction, they will that will remain on classical. So there has to be back and forth between classical and quantum computer. And that's where CODA is enabling uh, that hybrid quantum classical computing. It is supporting C++ and Python, both languages. All valuable quantum applications uh, will be hybrid and they will use CODA. Um, CODA is open, uh, anyone can use. Um, and it is seamless. Right now, it is being used for quantum simulators, circuit simulators. But later on, those simulators can be replaced by actual quantum computer. So there is nothing like uh, no need to do recoding and all. 
it can easily be replaced, right? So supports any kind of QPU, all kind of quantum processing units are supported. Um, there is a compiler for hybrid systems uh, like NVQ++ that is available. Uh, this is um, open again, uh, and it supports C++ and Python. Um, again, we are working with all key players on this, and that work is in progress. All researchers are using those. Um, you see right side, almost all the key players name are there. Right? Um, here, we would like to show the advantage of Coda. So we saw this VQE iteration speed up where variational quantum eigen solver is being solved and there are multiple iteration of that. So many times it starts from classical computing, then offload to quantum, then come back. And again, the, it's a iterative process, right? Where we compare the results with Coda and without Coda using GPUs, in both cases, GPUs are being used, but if we use Coda, what is the advantage? And that if we go for 20 qubit problem, we see the advantage is around 287x. So that Coda is enabling the hybrid algorithms and their uh, performance advantage, right? So uh, in summary, that DGX is co-quantum appliance um, that uh, allows to accelerate quantum circuit simulations and take the advantage of those. Coda is again pioneer and uh, that will helping in pharma energy and machine learning and more where one can easily offload. And whatever they are doing right now, easily replaceable for tomorrow. Like if today they one is using simulators, tomorrow that simply can be replaced with the QPU, quantum processing unit. With that, I would like to close and happy to have questions. Thank you. Participants, do you have any questions? Uh, sir, you were talking about Q TensorNet, right? Currently, is yes. it uh, using thousand qubits? Yes, it is available. Thousand qubits. Yes. You can go up to thousand qubits. Yes. Hi, sir. Uh, hi, sir. Can you hear me? Yes, please. Yeah. Sir, you mentioned about. Uh, GPU giving acceleration, right, sir? So yes. this acceleration that we get uh, in the processing happens in the classical uh, computer, sir. Mm -hmm. So the quantum, uh, how does it uh, increase? I mean, how does it affect the, uh, uh, in terms of optimization, um, the classical computer does the optimization much faster than the uh, normal ones. Therefore, we get, uh, uh, speed up in VQE, is that how we should understand? Where I'm coming is, uh, NVIDIA is not doing anything on quantum computer per se. We are not developing, we are not doing anything, right? First thing clear. But right now, quantum computers are at evolving stage. They may take a decade, right? So okay. right now, every work is going on with the quantum simulators. Whatever quantum computing we are doing, algorithm development or any new feature which we would like to introduce in our applications and so on. Everything going on with the quantum simulators because mean quantum computers are um, limited in terms of qubits or uh, error tolerance and so on, so on. Those uh, quantum circuits, what we have, those are accelerated on GPUs. That's where uh, I would like to show. Uh, that's where, uh, that's the messaging I would like to convey. Okay, the quantum hardware is getting accelerated by the GPUs. Oh, um, so uh, are you seeing this picture? Yes, sir. So right, the yellow is quantum processor or quantum computers. Right. right? Here, NVIDIA has no role. Okay. Got it? Yes, now sir. what we say quantum computer with the meaningful qubits will take a decade, almost a decade or more, or we don't know. If things goes faster, it may come in five years or whatever. 
right now every work is going on with the simulators quantum circuit right. simulators okay what we did is we accelerate these quantum sim circuit simulators okay, okay. because these quantum circuit simulators they run on classical computer Correct. they don't use quantum computer and here we accelerated them using nvidia gpu interesting so that is where uh, we have this two uh, kind of versions one is state vector and uh, tensor network and yes. therefore we are able to go up to even uh, thousands of qubits which is just not possible without the gpu uh, way of doing it right um, so raghav yes, sir thousand... uh, raghav sir you were asking about the high performance computing right uh, for uh, yeah. you can use coda you can right. run it on that as of now as from this lecture i came to see that it's open source you can use that okay thank you yeah uh, hi sir hello sir. Uh, hello. hello yeah uh, hello sir i have one question so these are like similar to the aws like um, the simulators offered by aws like you know, uh, aws tn1 dm1 and uh, state vector simulator which aws offers right yeah on aws also you uh, they are simulators that's right and you can they are also uh there also you can use the what you say nvidia gpu and get the accelerated performance yeah uh, okay so thank you hello sir hello yeah uh, sir as we can see on this slide it's written that uh, this uh, cu quantum is integrated with uh, frameworks like circ and qiskit so That's right. does that uh, so does that mean like if i have a code written on qiskit so mm -hmm. i can uh, directly run it uh, on uh, nvidia's gpu and accelerate uh, accelerate it or it's like i need to write another code using uh, cuda to feed it into the gpu what is it like you that's how, uh, how it works is you need to uh, first download the container q co quantum is available as a container so that you download in that you can use your existing code wherever you are calling few libraries that you need to replace with co quantum and that will accelerate no need to write full code very light modification and with that you can get a speed up okay sir where, where can i find more information about uh, how to use here. this co quantum here here, here. developer.nvidia.com co quantum oh, okay sir okay Uh, one question, sir. Uh, you said that two quantum, you said two kinds of simulator, Q state vector and Q tensor net, and you said that Q state vector has almost n cube complexity, whereas Q tensor net has just uh, order of n complexity. So I would like to know how how does it happen, sir? Actually, is it open or? Uh, I think we are confusing two three things. Yeah. Um, Q state vector, we have common algorithms which we optimize them like QFT. Uh, sure algorithms supremacy and there we get significant speed up right mm -hmm. now we come to this tensor net or co tensor net here i shown original algorithm has cost of around n cube whereas we have optimized algorithm implementation which has which is order of n and that you can find there so automatically you will get optimized algorithm only with co tensor net and you can use it Is the code open? I mean, uh, at least the specification is open, sir, for this two tensor net. Yes, so can... it's open. It's oh, open. Okay, thank you. Sir. Hello, Manish. Yes. Yes, yes. Uh, this is Shomodi this side. So I have two questions. So we know that when uh, when a linear algebra routine gets simulated on a GPU, there are many optimizations that are happening under the hood, right? Yeah. So, are there some parallel optimizations also happening when uh, a GPU cluster simulates a quantum algorithm? Yeah, similar kind of things. Yeah, we we are uh, utilizing the uh, GPU's capability, right? Tensor cores, graph, uh, and CUDA cores. Yeah. So like QFT is a FFT algorithm. Yeah. Where uh, you use uh, for CUDA version is QFFT, CUFFT, and here okay. for quantum we are using QFT. 
Okay. It's okay. a similar okay. kind of things. Yeah. Okay. They're 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 closely parallel, right? They correspond yes. to the, the ordinary vertex. And the second thing is that there you showed a slide of tensor contractions, optimal tensor contractions. So yes, I I want to know why can I learn more about that? How the tensor contra contra uh, contractions are designed and how to read up more on this? Yeah, you Maybe. you should go here on co quantum page. You start from there and you will find relevant reference there. The references are there, right? Okay. 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 Yeah. okay. Thanks. 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 Okay. Hello, sir. Hello. Uh, yeah. Hello, sir. Can you hear me, sir? Yes. Uh, so you have said about the thousand qubits is a minimum one. So are we, are it being embedded with the algorithmic qubits, sir? Thousand qubit with, with the algorithms. You said sure algorithm and QFT. So is there any uh, differences between the qubits along with the algorithmic qubits, sir? Sorry, I'm confused here. I mean, um, no. thousand is not for a state vector and all. I did not talk about that. Yes. So, I mean, you have said minimum of thousand qubits is required. For practical problems to solve okay. the practical problems. And that's where we are not there yet. Yes. Yeah. That even more than thousand, I talk about 10,000 for practical problems. Right now, yeah, what millions of qubits for the practical applications. That's right. Yeah. But where right now is what is going on right now work is up to a state vector simulation goes up to 50 qubits right now in practical in present scenario. Okay. Whereas tensor net it goes around thousands qubits. Okay, sir. Okay. So but each uh, but each gate can have the pair of bits, qubits. Yes, yes, that can be there. Uh, each gate can have the pair of bits, as you said, with the 50. Yes, yeah. that's right. Okay, thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Yeah, hi, Manish Rajiv here. Uh, yeah. How many maximum number of qubits I can simulate using uh, eight number of A100? Uh, and uh, if you, if, uh, yeah, eight, eight number of A100. For which algorithm? Uh, no, no. I mean, any other them, but which maximum, how much you can tensor floor say? I am showing here like 32 or 35 for a state vector simulation. You can go here for uh -huh. a state vector, but for tensor net, you can go hundreds of more than hundreds. So, depending okay. on your algorithm. Okay. So, on a single eight, uh, 800, I can go maximum of. of 32. Is that not single? You started with the eight, now you are going single. Sorry. I mean, in the sense, eight into 800. <laughs> yeah, eight into 800. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And uh, can I use any other than 800, like H100 is there and A40, 830, A30? 800, 800 is not yet available for access. Do you have? I mean, I do not have. Yeah, yeah we are ordering. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we, then yeah we can, and certainly you can that, use on H100. Yes. No okay. Problem. A40 or A30. I mean, what you have there, we can try, but then the memory size and other things vary. So, same number of qubits may not be there. Okay. Okay. So, whatever the available hard available GPUs, we can try to. Yes, we can try. Oh, yeah. That's it. yeah. Thank you. Is there any further questions? Is there any further questions from the participants? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Hello. Gayatri, ma'am, am I audible? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can. Ah, yes, sir. So thanks for the informative session, sir. Uh, I'm having one question. Um, so, which one is better for uh, GPU performance uh, programming, like uh, CUDA or OpenACC? Which one is better? Both we have to use. So, OpenACC is easy to start with. Very few modification required and one can start. But more flexibility comes with the CUDA. CUDA is the ultimate speed. Yeah. 
but in what way these two things refer uh, differs uh, both are languages or uh, so we can HTML use only instructions you insert in the code with CUDA, you get more flexibility. Uh, how many, how much GPU you can use, how many threads. With OpenACC, those flexibility is not there. Like in GPU, how many threads and how many blocks are there. Those, mm -hmm. how many to use and how to use. So those flexibility is with CUDA. So okay, if we, have... if we use CUDA, uh, we could uh, what um, accelerate the performance the... of a GPU. Yeah, we control, control the performance better. The, yeah, better. Okay, so what it. about uh, open CLs or open CL? Open CL is another thing, which is open source. Coda is proprietary. Open CL is open source. Yeah. Open source. Okay, sir. so when we when we do offloading to GPU, so what mm -hmm. are the ways that we could compare the performance other than the speed up? I mean, is speed up only you will compare, or what you want to? Sorry, questions. What you would like to know? Oh. Sorry, sir. Can you repeat your question? Can you explain more? So you need a performance is one of the measurement, right? When we accelerate the code. Yes, what, but what's your question? I, mean, I, I get. No, no. What are the other methods or other parameters for which we could evaluate the uh, performance of the GPU when we do the offloading? So generally we see the main is performance. And then yeah. if you want to see the memory utilization on GPU, okay. what, okay. is it optimal using that or not? How much is the data transfer? How to minimize that data transfer from CPU to GPU? Yeah. That is generally overhead, right? Data transfer is overhead. So yeah. yes, it's possible. Okay, so thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, sir. It was a very wonderful session. We have uh, now learned about the Q quantum and the coda. Thanks for the session. Thank you. Yeah.